to Cooking with the Chef and the Bee. I'm Chef Dan Williams, and today we are going to be making rhubarb wine. Well, not just today. This is going to take about seven months total, but this is part one of a three or four part series on how to make rhubarb wine. So rhubarb is sprouting up all over in my little state of Vermont, and I thought, why not make some wine? But this first episode, we're going to do the first steps in making the wine, and also I will go over all the equipment and ingredients you need to make the wine in its entirety. Let's start off with equipment, seeing as it's a quite extensive list of equipment. First off, you are going to need one, you can get by with one, but having two of these glass carboys is preferable. Uh, I prefer glass over plastic, but that's totally up to you. I just try to avoid plastics as much as I can. Uh, you're gonna need a rubber stopper with one hole in it that fits into your carboy as well as a little airlock here. Uh, these airlocks are designed to allow CO2 to escape, but make it so that nothing can get in, no bugs, no contaminants, nothing. You're gonna need a hydrometer to test the specific gravity and see the final alcohol content in your wine, if you want. This isn't technically necessary, it's an optional thing, but it's cool to have if you wanna see how strong the alcohol is. Um, you're going to need about six uh, wine bottles. Um, you can use recycled wine bottles. These ones I picked up at a winery auction that was going on in uh, Burlington, Vermont a while ago. Uh, really good deal, $5 for a case of 12. Couldn't go wrong, so I picked up a bunch. You don't have to use wine bottles. You can use mason jars, whatever, but I just like wine bottles that look nice. Uh, you'll need wine corks if you're going to go with the bottling route. These are wicked cheap. Uh, at homebrew stores, you can get like a pack of 100 for like 10, 11 bucks. Um, you're gonna need a corker, which corks the wine in the bottle. You would just put your cork here and put this part on the bottle and bring it down and it'll seal it perfectly. You are going to need some sort of sanitizer and cleaning solution. I like to use One Step. It's a oxygenated uh, sanitizer and cleaner. Uh, it's no rinse, so you don't need to rinse it out afterward. Uh, I think I bought this off Amazon for like eight or nine dollars like a year or two ago. That's great stuff. Lasts a long time too. This is another optional thing, but I like to have it. Uh, it's a wine filter. So this will filter out any impurities or sediment that's in the wine. So it'll give you a nice crystal clear wine instead of a cloudy wine. But once again, that's all preference. That's up to you. I once in a while don't mind a cloudy wine, but it's nice to have a nice clear wine, it just looks good. We'll also need a siphon and a bottle filler. Okay, you don't really need these either, but this makes your life a whole lot easier when you're transferring the wine from the carboy into the bottles. You don't need it, but it is nice. And now let's talk about ingredients. So for ingredients, you're gonna need five pounds of rhubarb. I cut this out of my backyard today. I have a lot of it. You are going to need a gallon of water, really, you only need three quarts of water. I'm using uh, spring water just because the water in my town is pretty chlorinated and I really don't want that flavor to affect the, chlor the chlorine flavor to affect any of my other flavors. So I just bought some store bought water. You're gonna need three pounds of sugar, white sugar. You're also gonna need yeast nutrient, one Camden tablet, which is just a uh, potassium metabisulfate. You're gonna need a one packet or five grams of white wine yeast. You're gonna need a bag of black tea. Uh, this is optional too, but I like to add it because it, it'll add some tannins to your wine. Uh, it's not necessary, but I like a nice tanniny wine, you know? You will also need at the end if you want to back sweeten the wine, which means if your wine is not quite as sweet as you'd like it, you can add more sweetener, more sugar, more honey, whatever, after it's fermented. So in order to do that, you're gonna need a, about a half a teaspoon of potassium sorbate, which kills off the yeast. And then you're gonna need about a cup of sugar or half a cup to a cup of honey. You wanna, you wanna kill off the yeast, otherwise fermentation can start back up. And then once you bottle it, your bottles could explode while they're aging. Let's get right into the first steps of making this wine. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to trim off any of the le big leaves that are on the top of the rhubarb and then Wash your rhubarb because there will be dirts and dirt and little bugs all over it. And then you're just gonna chop it. 
into little thin pieces, about half inch pieces, just like this. And then just transfer them to a large mixing bowl. Chopping rhubarb, the smell of it brings me right back to when I used to go over to my great grandmother's health house and she'd be making strawberry rhubarb pie or something with rhubarb. The smell is very nostalgic. So once you have all of your rhubarb cut, you're gonna take your three pounds of sugar and just pour it over it. And then just give it a shake so it coats all the rhubarb in there. Now this might seem like a lot of rhubarb and a lot of sugar, but I promise you, it's gonna come out perfect, and this is the exact amount we're gonna want. So once all the sugar and the rhubarb is all mixed together, you're gonna let it sit for 24 hours to three days. I'm only gonna do 24 hours. You're gonna leave it out at room temperature, and you're gonna cover it with plastic wrap. I'm not a plastic wrap, so I'm just gonna cover it with tin foil. And tomorrow, when I get up, this should be fully macerated and there will be a nice pink syrupy liquid at the bottom, which will be the base to our wine. So, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of the Rhubarb Wine series. Um, the next episode will be posted probably tomorrow. As I said earlier, this whole process takes about seven months total, a month for fermentation and then an additional six months to age the wine. Uh, that is if you want to age the wine. I do highly recommend that you do age the wine, but that is once again your choice. Um, so yeah, as always, please subscribe to my channel and be sure to like and share this video. Um, also visit my website chefandb.com. Once again, that's chefandb.com. There you can find a bunch of information about me and my goals for my future restaurant, The Chef and the Bee. Um, you can get involved by subscribing to my newsletter and taking a dining survey, which is on the homepage at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.